the uh, Balikatan Exercise uh, 39 24 is have taken up and it will include many different exercises but more so it is to improve the mutual development of both militaries and armed forces in all aspects of military operations from tactical and of to the strategic level and it includes the cyber defense exercise the FPX and the maritime strike exercise and the multinational maritime exercise to be held in the Western Mindanao Command. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much for covering up for today and good morning. Thank you very much, sir. Now may we have the statement coming from Lieutenant General Journey, sir, for an opening statement prior okay. to the beginning. All right, great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Again, uh, uh, Lieutenant General Bill Journey, I'm a the commander for Marine Forces Pacific, uh, and, and on behalf of Admiral Aquilino, I represent uh, all of our U.S. forces uh, who are participating here uh, in the exercise, uh, along with my counterpart as the exercise director. So uh, it is again uh, great to be here um, with our long-standing uh, allies. It's an exciting time uh, as we kick off the 39th uh, Balakatan. And as many of you know, we've been doing Balakatan now for um, almost four decades. Uh, this year, we continue our duty, I, I would tell you, um, as we challenge ourselves. As I said previously, we've been uh, increased both the scope, scale, uh, and complexity and pace of Balakatan. And we've increased our combined combat readiness and interoperability uh, and opportunities to improve upon those. I mean, we're no longer uh, focused on just sort of the small scale unit tactics, techniques and procedures. Uh, they are fundamental, foundational, uh, but we are now focused at the operational level. Um, I, I'm excited to talk more about this year's uh, exercise during the engagement here this morning. Um, but, I, but I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to, to say thank you to the Armed Forces of the Philippines and more importantly, the people of the Philippines for being just such a tremendous host. Um, and thank you uh, to the government of the Philippines and the local governments um, and the local communities for their support. Again, I would just say our combined efforts here as we advance our shared goal of protecting a peaceful and prosperous region for us all, uh, just a tremendous opportunity in this year's Ballot of Tan and then look forward to your questions. Thanks. Thank you, Lieutenant General uh, Journey, sir. Now, prior for, prior for our uh, question and answer, some ground rules that you have to observe. You'll be entitled for one question and a follow-up. Please state your name and your outfit and to whom your questions are being directed to. So first off, can we call the... Uh, Buena Bernal of CNA Ch uh, Channel News Asia. Saying that the Philippines is stoking tensions through these exercises. Can you hear me? Well. Can you hear me? China is saying that the Philippines is stoking tensions through these exercises, but the fact that there are ASEAN member states in the observership program, do you think that that indicates that China is alone in its view? What do you make of the observership of ASEAN member states in Balikatan since the observership program started? We thank you, thank you for the question, but uh, I think the viewpoints goes for the DFA. Uh, ours uh, is only covered with the focus on Balikatan. Although uh, both the Balikatan exercise has many implications, we emphasize that the Balikatan exercise between the U.S. and the Philippines has been going on for the past 38 or 39 years now. And it's almost four decades that we're having and for the past four decades no issues has been raised on that so I think it's just a matter of point of view on what the exercise really is but for both militaries the exercise have been in the improvement in capabilities in understanding each other in all aspects of military operations thank you thank you Verna do you have any follow-up um. Can you talk more about the observership program and what does it, uh, what is the added value when 
uh, states from ASEAN are involved in this program since it started two years ago? Well, I would just add, I, I think it creates, uh, you know, an opportunity for all of us. It's it's inclusive rather than exclusive in most cases. And, uh, and the exercise ballot to TAN has continued to grow um, each and every year. And, and that's, uh, you know, sovereign nations uh, choosing uh, and requesting to join uh, the team here as we share uh, our collective understanding and, and try to improve our collective capabilities across the board. So I think it represents an opportunity. Uh, and when people see an opportunity to get better and improve and, and create new relationships, um, they, they're interested. And we've seen that continue to grow. So I think it's, it's very positive. Thank you very much, sir. Now we call uh, Patrick Dessus of PTV4. Please pass the mic. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Sir, I think for the AFP side, can you confirm the report based on a tweet by... Uh, can you confirm this report, sir, based on the tweet of uh, military analyst uh, Ray Powell that at least two Chinese maritime militia vessels were spotted just 30 nautical miles from the shores of Palawan? And can you consider this, that China is sending a message given the fact that we have opened the Balikatan exercises today and there will be a multilateral maritime exercise within the West Philippines? Frankly, I cannot confirm you that. Uh, on the presence of the maritime militia but uh, the Chinese maritime militia has already has always been in the South China Sea ever since the uh, the, the under misunderstanding and these areas have uh, have started so they've been there they have developed them but as to that report I cannot confirm or deny it but uh, surely I would say that uh, we would expect some presence of the Chinese side also because they have built their structures in these areas. Thank are, you. Are there any contingencies just in case the Chinese side will become uh, more aggressive during the exercises? Well, as part of the, the multinational maritime exercise, we always adhere to international law and the freedom of navigation in these seas. So uh, I think we wouldn't see any problem so long as we follow international law and follow our agreed, mutually agreed cooperative mechanisms. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir, you want to add up? If I could, I would just offer, you know, one of the key aspects of uh, Balakatan, uh, I think if you recognize a group of like-minded individuals um, who have come together by treaty in some case and, and by a request in others, whether observing or participating, uh, it is like-minded partners, allies, and friends who are here uh, based on a fundamental value belief in an international order based on international law. And so uh, I think that's uh, the exercise is operating well within those and those that aren't, uh, I'll let you be the judge. Thank you very much, sir. Again, may we request and remind all our media partners to really focus on the Balikatan exercise itself so that we will have a, uh, a good interaction with our talking heads. Remember that our talking heads are the exercise director of these two uh, nations participating so they could better answer those. All other questions as outside Balikatan can be addressed by the, our AP spokesperson and the designated spokesperson for Balikatan. Thank you. So the next question, sir, will be coming from... Uh, Joanna Balyaran of uh, DG Press. Good morning, sir. I'm Joanna Balyaran from DG Press. Sir, can you uh, elaborate on the island reading exercise? Um, tell us more about these and the, you know, some details about the exercise and where and when will this exercise be held? Well, the island taking exercise will uh, take place in the areas of North, Northern Luzon, particularly in the Batanis group of islands. And uh, I think uh, that's it. The island uh, taking exercise, just an exercise on uh, 
SOF operation, Special Forces operation, more or less. So, uh, is, is that in response to like the Taiwan issue? Uh, nothing really. It's part of the exercise as a means that our both the Special Forces units from the U.S. and the Philippine side work together in some degree of special operations. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Now we have a question coming from Jim Gomez uh, from uh, Associated Press. Jim, where are you? Hello, sir. Hello. Sir, the, the exercises uh, have a team of territorial defense or uh, at, at the, in the, this year's uh, version of the Balikatan and for the first time the activities are being held beyond the territorial waters of the Philippines especially the uh, South China Sea side uh, with, with this what me message are you sending to potential aggressor in the region can I get the answer from the, both the good general uh, Yes, it's the first time that we are going beyond our 25, uh, 24 nautical miles, but it's not really addressed to any aggressors. But for the U.S., as we have been speaking, and the Philippine side, it's more of the development of our interoperability, our collective effort, protection of international law, and develop that uh, make sure that the freedom of navigation in these areas goes freely and not impeded by any other parties in the process. Thank you. Any follow sir? Yes, sir. Can you add up? I didn't get the first part of this question. Uh, uh, one of the themes of the exercises this year is territorial defense for the Philippines and uh, for the first time... Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yes, sir. Um, so, no, thanks. I, I think, uh, again, um, Exercises here and exercises in other locations operate based on uh, international order and international law, and I think well within your own sovereign um, rights and, and responsibilities. We're conducting uh, exercises that are normal. Yeah, you can have your follow up. Uh the Jim. But we have increased the scale and scope and complexity, as I said. So as, as you're describing something that appears to be different in an exercise, uh, you know, freedom of navigation and movement in accordance with international law goes on each and every day. Um, and the fact that you're doing those uh, concurrent with an exercise is is perfectly acceptable in, in my view. The U.S. military brought a uh, mid-range capability missile system to the northern Philippines, but there's no plan to fire this system. So what is the tactical significance of bringing it here? And would, because of, it, it took several hours to bring it here from the U.S. to the northern Philippines, would you consider leaving it in the Philippines? Sure. sure. We, uh, we all collectively uh, exercise participants or moving and deploying a variety of equipment, planes, ships, uh, systems to support, some new, some old. And all of those are an opportunity to learn, practice, rehearse, look at what the roads, the bridges, partners and allies have a greater understanding of equipment and capability. Um, you know, the Philippines themselves offer a great opportunity from a training standpoint whether it's working in the littorals and the archipelago and islands um, for individuals to operate I mean we go to we go to Norway for cold weather training you know, you know you have mountainous environments and so you have you have some of the most beautiful uh, tough triple canopy jungle and uh, waterways and islands for us to learn how to conduct operations across a full range of mission sets uh, not only as an individual service not only with our bilateral partners but with also other partners and allies so like I said that's the that's the complexity of how we've continually and progressively increased what we're doing 
and to do that while command and controlling and coordinating across that force and supporting and sustaining it logistically is pretty tough government work. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Jim. Our next question is coming from uh, El Hermonia of Nikkei. Uh, good morning, sirs. Uh, so this year's Balikatan will hold the inaugural information warfare exercises. Can you expound on this? What are the specific activities it will include and what targets are you hoping to achieve from the exercise? And how does it differ from the cyber defense exercise that I believe the AFP has already been doing? I think again that represents the continuing increase in complexity, uh, not only of this exercise, but today's uh, operating environment. I mean, right now as we sit here, you are conducting information operations, right? And so as a military force, um, being able to synchronize our activities and coordinate so that we work together um, is important. And as you know, um, achieving clear understanding by different parties in order to achieve a singular desired effect um, is challenging, it's tough. So uh, synchronization, I would say, in the information space, um, you have to work across different systems. Um, we have different uh, systems that we need to be able to communicate across a combined and joint force. Um, and so I'd say that's probably one of the key aspects of it and we're all learning and uh, and we're learning a whole lot from each other and that's that's the other great opportunity that this presents the uh, information warfare exercise is, uh, and cyber exercise are highly different as uh, mentioned by my counterpart we have included the information war warfare exercise to increase the complexity and the exchange of learning knowledge between the two militaries. It also includes other parts of our government that are in, uh, particularly from the Foreign Affairs, the uh, PCO, and the De Defense Department. We have included so that we would uh, be able to integrate our own efforts as a whole of government in the process of uh, information. While on cyber defense, it's highly different because it talks on the cyber, another domain of warfare that we have to develop, but it readily focuses on defense within the internet systems, within our communication systems, and that's the difference between the information warfare and the cyber defense. Uh, just to follow Thank up. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Yes, follow up. Um, what kind of threats are you imagining like, or, or expecting in the information space or cyberspace that you hope to address with this, with this exercise? Well, the cyberspace or information space that you have mentioned is very complicated. Every day we have malware, every day we have spywares that we are encountering, viruses. So it's very complicated that every day and day to day now we are encountering it that we really need to have be able to protect our systems and information within that kind of system that we have developed. I would say the other, the other yes. side of that it would be uh, opportunities. So there are challenges or potential threats, uh, but there's also opportunities. So you need to approach both with equal vigilance. Um, again, none of this is based on any third country. Uh, it's We provide and create over the course of a year, we sit down and plan these and identify the objectives that we want to work together on. Um, and so you create fictional um, situations um, that would allow a training audience um, to try to solve a problem and learn something from it. So that's that's the approach. Okay, thanks. thank you very much, sir. Another question is coming, com coming from uh, Ken Sasaki of Kyoto News. This time, uh, first time, it's first time that the PCG vessel actively participated in Balikatan. And uh, uh, why civilian vessels needed, needed to be a part of this exercise? And uh, uh, is it related 
with the um, harassment or maybe water cannoning or something uh, by uh, Chinese uh, side in the West Philippines. I didn't quite understand the first part uh, of the... Can you please uh, repeat your question? Was he talking about a civilian vessel? Was he talking about a civilian vessel? You're talking, talking about, about Coast Guard? Including of uh, civilian vessels in the exercise and yeah. was this related in any way for for the uh, in, in our resupply mission that we use civilian is, is that it? That's it. So why are we including civilian uh, vessels? Like I think from the uh, Philippine Coast Guard and our Coast Guard during the exercise. Uh, I think that's the point of the question. Well, as uh, mentioned earlier, it in, that includes the uh, complexity of the ex increasing the complexity of the exercise because it's no longer the whole military itself, but it already includes other agencies of government with the U.S. and the Philippine side working together to protect the, to be able to protect our own interests and our sovereignty in the process. So it's just an integration between the different agencies of government to be able to protect our interests based on international law, our freedom of navigation, our interest in those areas as part of our sovereign territory. Thank you. So being able to better uh, communicate, coordinate um, with other agencies outside of a purely military organization, uh, again, represents uh, an evolving security environment uh, that also represents an increase in complexity, um, but one in which we need to get better at and improve so that we're able to share information with our Coast Guards, um, with our police forces. And, um, and so we recognize those and we really reach out to them and include all those interagency organizations uh, in, in the exercise that we can. Okay. And once again, you know, the Philippines being a great host, um, they have accommodated those types of training opportunities in this exercise. Thank you very much. Okay, follow up. Uh, yes. Um, so, what kind of uh, training, particularly uh, for these uh, PCG vessels and uh, uh, Navy vessels, are going to be? Well, it can be as simple as you got to talk to them. And um, so you got to communicate with them. You have to be able to share um, locations and understanding in order to maintain maritime domain awareness of a situation. So, command, control, and coordination is challenging enough internal to the United States Marine Corps. And now we need to do it across the Air Force and the Navy and the Army and the Coast Guard. And oh, by the way, now we're doing it across countries in a combined environment. So uh, those things are training opportunities um, that we are getting after. So and I think maybe they're taken for granted just a little bit. Like you're gonna pick up your iPhone and be able to talk to everybody and, uh, and it don't quite work that way. And I don't think you think that, but just an example. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, we have another question here coming from Bea, Bea Bernardo of NHK. Bea. Good morning, sirs. Sirs, um, we have 14 countries participated as observers in this year's Balikatan. Is this the biggest number of um, countries that participated at, as observers? And may I know the total numbers of participants as observers, sirs? <laughs> I really don't know yet the exact number now, but uh, it includes our allies in Asia, and of course that includes Australia, South Korea, and Japan, as mentioned during the opening ceremony. So the real numbers of observers, I, uh, I don't have the exact number of it, but uh, that includes our allies. Uh, just to emphasize, the exercise is to develop shared goals, the shared commitment. And that goal and commitment are shared with our friends, partners, and allies within the region. So that's just for the case of the observers, it's how to develop the trust and confidence within the, our neighbors, particularly the Asian countries. Thank you. Okay, any follow up there? I will tell you, we did talk uh, last year at the end of 23 
we, we sit and we sit down at the end of this collectively uh, with the, with the group of leaders and we talk about how it went and we talk about hey what are our aspirations what are the things that we're going to consider for next year before we start doing detailed planning and uh, both of us uh, sat down with our senior leaders and we ask ourselves are we going to measure success by simply having more people participate or are we going to measure success by actually doing more complex activities um, and so that's why in, in our opening comments we, we were highlighting now there are plenty of individuals interested and i believe the numbers are actually higher this year than last year both in quantity and in observers um, but i will offer to you that the real measure of success here is that the complexity and scope of that which we are undertaking um, to get better at right and so and, and we've got a lot of work to do um, but I, I would offer to you to take a look at those as, uh, as a real measure of success thank you very much sir just to give uh, an update for everybody about the number of participants uh, this will be updated as we go uh, time goes by for the during the con entire conduct of the exercise uh, some of the uh, other participants are still coming over so we'll give you some updates on that and it will be course through our designated spokesperson for the Balikitan 39. So that will be it. Thank you very much, Bea. Uh, with no further questions, may we call on Cliff Venzon from Bloomberg. Cliff, are you? So, okay, now it's happened. I think you have already uh, answered your questions. Well, our last two questions will be coming from uh, Ms. Ellen Aben and uh, Spencer. So, Ms. Uh, Ellen Aben from Arab News, please. Sir, what makes this year's budget plan different from the previous iterations? What sets it apart from the previous iterations? And um, what sort of scenario are you looking at that you needed to conduct um, maritime exercises outside the Philippines' territorial waters? What the, kind of threats? The difference between last year's Palikatan and now's Palikatan is actually increasing the uh, complexity of the exercise and letting more people learn within each other. It's the learning that, uh, that uh, it's the quality of learning that we have now in the 39th iteration. And we have emphasized this particularly to our senior officers because the command and control exercise is a really complex planning and decision-making process that we should do wherein our outside of the AFP should be well-trained and uh, knows really how to do so that uh, in the actual sense of uh, activities, we would be able to appropriately and efficiently perform it and that would better serve the people we are serving in the process of this execution. And the complexities of this, uh, the, the exercise that we have now really would improve the quality, capability of our own personnel so that we can better serve you. Thank you. One, uh, you know, historically there's, there's been a command post exercise series of events, there's a field training exercise series of events, and then there's civic action series of events. And, and those were all executed uh, very well and, and delivered the results that all were looking for. Very complex. Um, and we've combined all these events underneath those um, for them to work after. We've also identified within those command control coordination challenges and opportunities. There's information warfare exercise. There's cyber exercise. There are the combined joint all domain operations uh, because again it is not only joint and combined uh, but the complexity that we have now applied across all domains air land sea information cyber space um, and extending that into the interagency organizations to include the coast guard uh, the police those, those would be examples that I would I would offer of how it has increased in scale, scope, and complexity. 
Any other question? What sort of scenario or threats were you looking at when you planned the conduct of maritime exercises outside the Philippines' territorial waters? The we create scenarios that enable the training that we're trying to achieve. So you so you work backwards. So if you're if you're trying to achieve the following objectives, then you simply create whatever scenario is most conducive to get the exercise force to do this. So there's not some uh, uh, standing scenario. Uh, it's based over the course of the year. That's the work that all of our planners do um, to generate those types of activities that we're trying to achieve in an objective. All right, and that is just standard training 101 um, for all training and exercises that we do those. Sir Degrini would like to add up? My counterpart excellently answered it already. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Our last question will be coming from Spencer from uh, AP Radio. Morning, sir. Uh, this question is for Sir Nicodini. Uh, my name is Spencer from AFP. Are, what are the significance of Balikatad aside from equipping our national security, but in terms of the uh, in terms for our economic development? And uh, can you give some information about this year's Balikatan humanitarian civic assistance, its purpose and its objectives? Thank you, sir. Well, this year's Balikatan, there are four programs for humanitarian civic action. One is Cagayan, another one is La Union, one is in Ilocos, Pasukin Ilocos Norte, and the other one is in San Palawan. And if the XDHHCA varies from uh, schools to, uh, to health centers, that would help the communities. Well, the significance of Barikatan is, as mentioned within the opening, it's not just an exercise between the AFP and the Indo-Pacific Command, but it integrates all the collective learning, the understanding, the cooperation, collaboration between the armies to achieve that level of efficiency and interoperability so that we can better work with each other in the process of addressing issues and concerns within the region. So that's the real sense. But in the process of doing so, we develop that cohesion that would uh, deliberately support also our effectiveness in matters of operations. Thank you. And if I could, I would just add, as an example, um, and as you well know, um, Super Typhoon Ige uh, last August, um, because of the opportunity of Balakatan and working together, uh, both understanding the different locations and geography uh, and the ability to command, control, and coordinate with our counterparts. Um, we were able to provide immediately um, both heavy lift helicopters and, uh, and medium lift Ospreys uh, that quite frankly moved from Etka sites in Palawan um, to Subic all under the direction of the government of the Philippines, working with uh, all of our counterparts and pushing into uh, the Batanas Islands from Lalo uh, into Bosco. And that was thousands uh, of uh, pounds of life-saving uh, support to folks who were uh, suffering from that. So those are, those, are, those are examples of how these opportunities working together in training during Balakatan enable uh, those types of things. As, as likewise, just in February, um, with the torrential rains and the mudslides in the uh, southern region of Mindanao, um, I was C-130s right out of 3 Met uh, that immediately, they moved the locations that we had already practiced and worked together at uh, under the same challenging command, control, and coordination across our governments to be able to make those things move faster at the need of the people um, to prevent suffering and save lives. And so those are those were a result of uh, our continued working together, of designing an exercise that allowed us to better learn how to do those things in a more effective joint and combined way. Thank you very much. That uh, That's the last question. And uh, before we end with our uh, press conference, may I request any parting statement or remarks would you like to convey? Can we start with uh, None for me. 
I, I thank you for the opportunity, and I, and I thank uh, our, our gracious hosts. It's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. It's allowed us all to increase and enhance our combined operational capabilities uh, across all domains like no other that we have an opportunity to do. And it's built on, you know, just the ironclad relationship we have here uh, with our Philippine uh, partners. And so, uh, sir, thank, thank you, sir. you for, for all that you have and continue to do and look forward to working together. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Your parting remarks, sir? Well, the, the exercise is uh, well founded on the inter interoperability, cooperation, and collaboration between U.S. and Philippine Armed Forces, particularly so that we can better serve our people and protect our territory and sovereignty in the process. Thank you very much and good morning. Yes, that's, uh, that's all for our press conference. Maraming maraming salamat to our talking heads, Lieutenant General Journey and uh, Major General Licodini. Again, to our media partners present, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong participation. Lunch will be served at uh, Public Affairs Office uh, AFP. So after this, uh, you can have that.